Hi, Allie. Welcome to the Sir Thriving Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited for our conversation today. Yeah, me too. Um, I open every episode with one question. You can answer it any way that you feel comfortable. And that is, are you surviving or thriving? I feel like both. Some areas right now are like true survival mode uh, with little kids. And then other areas, I feel like I'm thriving. So I feel like I'm kind of walking, walking the line right now. A thin line, maybe sometimes it feels like. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, thank you for being honest and being vulnerable with our listeners. To bring people up to speed on who Allie is and the wonderful work that you do online and with clients, can you just share a little bit with listeners of who you are, the content you create, and how you ended up in like the financial space? Yeah, so I'm Allie Williams. My company is financially focused, so like financially spelled A-L-L-I at the end instead of a Y, like my name. Um, And my main goal is to help people create a realistic financial plan they can actually stick to. So paying off debt, save, spend without depriving yourself and just make money more conversational and fun. So I've been in this space since 2017. Um, I started as a blog in 2017, just kind of sharing what I was doing and what's going on. And then from there, it evolved into coaching and courses and all that fun stuff. I have my MBA in finance. Um, I live in South Carolina um, now on a 25 acre farm with my husband and two little boys love college sports and pretty much always I'm drinking coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Cheers to that, right? (laughs) And for anyone wondering, it's um, Sunday at (laughs) 9am, President's Day weekend. So God bless the both of us (laughs) for doing this. (laughs) I'm really excited for this conversation just because I have like personally always kind of struggled in the sense of like just understanding like certain money things and terms and what's best for you. And it's really hard to not compare yourself to people around you. On your page and everything that I like research, you do a lot of work with budgets. And so it might seem like the B word is just like a budget, right? But in your terms, what exactly is a budget? Yeah, so everyone hates that word. Like I feel like there's probably listeners who like just you saying it triggers something um, because it's either like your dad told you you need it or something, you know, it's either someone like told you you need a budget to live or it's like some term you used in like a finance class one day. But really a budget is just a plan for your money. Like I don't care if you call it a spending plan, if you make up some creative term, um, a budget is just telling your money where to go. It is a plan so that you know where your money goes. And the best part is you get to decide. So when people come to me and they're like, my budget's restrictive. And I'm like, well, you cause that, you know, like that's the truth, right? Because no one's creating your budget for you or they shouldn't be something you should be doing. I don't create budgets for my like students because I want them to be able to do it. I will give you all the tips and help you and, you know, like edit it and go through it with you, but you need to know how to do it. So it's just telling your money where to go. So if you're trying to pay off debt, then yes, you'll have some, you know, debt payments in there. If you're trying to save, there'll be, you know, savings in there, but there should also be things that you value and things you enjoy. So if you do enjoy travel, maybe you can't go on a trip every month, but maybe you start saving for a trip next year. So truly a budget is just a plan for your money. And if you don't tell it where to go, it'll probably, you know, get spent on things that you don't really care about. Yeah, if you don't tell it where to go, the first thing that came to mind when you said that was like the coffees, the home good runs, Target, the treats, like this whole trend of like, I need to treat every time I leave my house. I've definitely have succumbed to that. It's hard to really look inward and be like, where do I actually want to spend my money? And when you're making different salaries or just in different life stages or situations in your friends, maybe like you're married and you have a double income and not everyone has that like luxury, like in its own way um, of having a double income. Everything is just very like for you. So I heard you kind of say that a lot. Like that's a theme, like it's where you want your money to be. And I have to be transparent. Like the word budget like makes me sweat. So (laughs) So <laughs> you're not alone. You're not alone. It's just, yeah. I've like, I probably reviewed at this point, like at least over a thousand budgets. So like, I'm so used to, you know, for me, it's just like my norm. And I, I work with people all the time who like, it's like a true fear to even check their account. Cause they're like, I know I've been overspending. Like, it's just not good. Like, you know, I don't want to even look at it. And the thing with, like I said, a budget, it's not something that's meant to take you 15 hours a week where it's like a second part-time job you know, or, you know, whatever. It's something where you have the systems in place where you can check in weekly, kind of see where your money's going, make adjustments and like move on with your life. But it does make you feel so much. I know it's like the opposite. Like you feel stressed out even thinking about a budget, but then having a budget will make you like way less stressed in general yeah. because you know exactly, you know, if you're going out with your friends, you know, you're fine. You're not like, oh my God, like 
I'm so nervous if we go over because, you know, I don't know if the money's in my account or, oh my God, like I also have this and this and this, like you already know. So it just like alleviates a lot of that, you know, financial yeah. anxiety. But for someone who's listening, who is like, okay, I just like need a budget where the heck do I start? Like, what are the three tips that you would give someone just looking to start like budget 101? So the first thing before, like everyone always wants to start with a budget, but like even when I work with people, like budgeting is module four. So there's things we like do before. Uh, first is just taking kind of like, I don't I say the word inventory, but there's it's not inventory because it's not physical things, but pretty much just looking at like what's going well, what's not right now. And some things that you might be like, Allie, nothing's going well, but like, do you pay your bills on time? Like, that's a win. And people like want to get so critical of themselves of like, well, you know, I haven't paid off $40,000 in a month. And it's like, well, you know, the average person is not doing that. Like you might see yeah. a social media influencer doing that, but most people are not. So just kind of like figuring out where you are as of today. And then doing a money audit is what I call. So pretty much you're going to choose an average month. Don't choose like December where you like overspent on Christmas or whatever holidays and like all that stuff but you're going to um choose an average month and just track your like every single expense i always tell people it's truly the worst step and i'm not going to like sugarcoat it and say you're going to have fun and it's going to be amazing but it is a needed step because you might think oh actually i know i spend a hundred dollars a week on groceries and then we look at your numbers and you're spending three hundred dollars a week so yeah what you think is your reality is not your reality and then when we go to create a budget you're basing it off of fake numbers or what you think you should do versus your real numbers. So we need to know literally where every dollar is going, your subscriptions, because there might be some that you like forgot you had, you know, yeah. how much are you really spending at Target? Because you think like, oh, it's a $30 Target run. And then you go to, you do that, every, you know, four days a week and, you know, it adds up. So first we do kind of take inventory of what's going on, do our money audit. And then we're going to start setting some just like money goals. So Right now, what's the priority in your life? Is it, you know, maybe you have nothing saved and you're like, Allie, it stresses me out because I have $10 to my name and I need like a basic emergency fund. Like, cool, that's our focus. Or maybe you have credit card debt and you're like, all right, like the interest rates, which is true, you know, on credit cards are wild, really want to pay off that. So we start to start put together kind of like your money goals and then between the money audit and your goals and kind of just figuring out where you are then we use those to kind of start crafting your budget so we need to do that first and for some people you know they can do that in a few days for other people that takes a few weeks depending on like how you know the last time you've checked your numbers but yeah yeah that's kind of the start so it's just really like self-awareness crack open your credit card yeah. and your bank accounts and just really do you recommend people print it out like their statements i mean you can i am like such a digital person at this point yeah. i mean i know some people that do everything you know print everything and like even like i have workbooks and stuff like i do type everything but like they'll print and write so it just kind of yeah. depends on your style if you feel like you're it would helpful to like highlight transactions and like go through you totally can do that so it just kind of depends on the person and like where their information is how many transactions they have a month are they someone yeah. that like swipes their card 20 times a day then you might want to like print to kind of go through or are you someone who really doesn't spend that much so it kind of just depends on the person there's no really like wrong way to do it is what you're saying like for me i have a spreadsheet like an expense tracker spreadsheet so i just kind of like plug in there and it like totals it up for me because even highlighting then you'd have to like go through and manually like obviously add it yeah. all up. it's truly the most annoying step but every single person who does it feels better after because at least then you know and i think a lot of it sometimes yeah. is fear of the unknown like you know you spend a lot and you're kind of like eh, don't really want to know the true number but at least once we know the numbers we can create a plan like and i always say just because you know, we create a budget doesn't mean I'm going to be like, you have to cut everything or you have to do this like yeah. drastic thing. It's like, it's just a starting point. And then from there, depending on your goals and how much money you have left after your expenses, then we decide like, are there things that we want to either temporarily cut, fully cut, reduce, then we go through, you know, all that fun stuff. So it's really just like understanding how you want to be successful, like within yourself financially. There's a lot of financial bloggers and people who work with clients and financial planners and account managers and all this stuff who say like, you need an, uh, a high yield savings account first. You need to pay, pay off your credit card. No, you need to pay off your student loans. Like, no, you need an emergency fund. So like, in your opinion, the average just like 30 something year old, what is like the best and safest and like smartest financial thing to do first? 
So I think you need an emergency fund. The initial goal, in my opinion, is like a one month of expenses. And when I say one month of expenses, everyone views that differently. So for some people that is like bare bones, like you had no income coming in, you could cut all the extra stuff, but you just need to cover your core, you know, rent, utilities, whatever payments, like minimum debt payments. For some people, they want one month of their like more lifestyle budget, which includes like the takeout ever. And then of course you want more than one month. You need something saved because if not, like say you go all in on credit card debt, then you pay that off when an expense comes up. What are you going to do? You're just going to put it back on the credit card because you have Mm. nothing saved. So then you're stuck in this cycle of like never, not never getting out of credit card debt, but it's hard to break if you have nothing saved. Um, Then for me, it would be credit card debt just because interest rate is like, I mean, credit card interest rates right now are like, I'd say like 15 to 25%. And you will, there's no other debt really out there that is going to top that. I, I think always from like the most, most mathematical side, um, I mean, student loans might be annoying, but usually their interest rates are not 15 to 25%. Like I think credit card debt is the next, but you can do both. And that's where I feel like something I am good at, or like one thing that sets me apart from other people is you can pay off debt and you can save. Yes. It might take you a little longer to do both, but if that's what like, helps you sleep at night. Like if you're like, Hey, Allie, like the credit card debt is like killing me. Like I, that's what stresses me out. The fact that like, I can't get out of this hole, then like, let's do both. So maybe let's say you have $200 left to allocate a month or something. I don't know. Like you put a hundred to savings and a hundred extra to debt. You are doing both. Yes. You won't save as fast. Or what you do is for four months, you put, you know, 150 to savings and 50 to debt. And then after four months, maybe you switch it. And then you go like, it doesn't have to be this like structured like you do the same thing every month for the rest of your life you know so we can be flexible with them we can kind of create that's my goal is like to help people create that flexible plan where based on seasons of life and based on kind of where you're at we adjust it so when I think about prioritizing goals I always think first is there something that has like a firm amount and deadline so Mm. if you have a trip coming up in three months and it's already mostly booked and maybe you need another five hundred dollars we need to get that $500 saved because if not, you're just going to put it on a credit card. So that has a firm date, firm amount. We need to focus on that. And then the second question is what's keeping you up at night? So like what if you had to just like without overthinking it, what is the one thing where you're like, oh, this is like really stressing me out? Then that's, you know, our second priority is the thing that's really stressing you out at night or whatever. And then we kind of create more plans and stuff from there. Okay. Yeah. And there's definitely multiple things that can keep you up at night and so it's really just like understanding that you can do both it just might take you longer and that's okay it doesn't mean that you're failing on having a budget or saving or paying off loans it just like might look different than someone who doesn't have one of those categories totally totally yeah so the basic like having a budget what would you say are like the do's and don'ts with having one and creating one so i think the If you get paid, so my like approach to budgeting is budgeting per paycheck. And so like, and you think about budgeting in the traditional sense, it's like you list your monthly income, then you list your monthly expenses and you kind of just are like, sounds good, you know, created a budget and like move on. You know, that's what most people think. It's kind of like a check check box item for the month. Um, And for me and my approach is per paycheck. So if you get paid weekly, we're going to have like four kind of mini budgets. If you get paid twice a month, we're going to have two. If you are married... And say you get paid twice a month and your partner gets paid every week, you're going to have a weekly budget and two will be, you know, bigger months. If you get paid monthly, that's okay, but we're going to still update your budget weekly because the biggest issue I see is people aren't checking in weekly with their budget and they're more reactive versus proactive. So they get to Mm -hmm. the end of the month and they're like, oh my God, I went over budget. Oh, well, like I'll try again later or they just don't try. But if we check in weekly, then if we are over we have time, we can make adjustments to the next few weeks to kind of balance that out. We'll move things around and kind of continue. And budgeting per paycheck really helps you see what expenses are coming out of which paycheck. So for example, most people, the first half of their month is their heavier expense month, because that's usually when like your mortgage or rent or something is due usually for 95% of people. Um, So like usually it's utilities and rent and you're like, oh my gosh, like my entire paycheck just went to like my bills and I have zero dollars. And then your second paycheck or something, you're like, oh, like I have money again. And you're kind of stuck in this like uneven cycle. So by budgeting per paycheck, we can kind of split, see that very clearly and then move things. So maybe we split your rent, like you're kind of saving for, you know, 
the second half of, let's say like this is February. So the second half of February, you're saving for the first part of March's rent. And then Mm -hmm. you only need to cover the first part of, you know, second half of March's rent in your first paycheck, or we kind of move bills around. You can change due dates on pretty much all of your bills, or you can allocate things differently. So it just helps us kind of really see where your money is going at different points of the month. And we can make adjustments from there. So I'd say dues would be like do budget per paycheck, do check in weekly. Um, don't budget monthly unless you get paid monthly, but we're still going to check in weekly. Um, and then, yeah, those would kind of be my top, top tips. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's helpful. And I've never actually really heard someone say like budgeting bi-weekly, like with your paycheck. And so like I get paid bi-weekly and understanding that like half of your paycheck can go to March is rent. And then like when you get paid the beginning of March, like that also can go, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I understand, I can like see it, like how that makes sense. Like the visual in my head, I think it's easy to be like stressed with like mortgage or utilities because these are the things that like help us have like a livelihood. And so, right. And it's also like non-negotiable. Like if you want to eat ramen for like one week, you can just like go into the grocery store and buy ramen, but like your rent's your rent. And so I think it's easy to be stressed. Like, oh my gosh, I need to like pay my rent. I need to like pay my rent. I can't be late. But then it's there's ways to like have it be less stressful but then also like not eating ramen for a week ramen's really good though but (laughs) no no totally I think like as I said like like mapping it out and kind of visually seeing clicks once you kind of see it starts clicking for people and then we can move things like okay if we see you're negative after paycheck one technically where pretty much you're having to put things on a credit card and like wait for your next paycheck to like pay it off you're kind of like behind then that's when we start moving things around and be like okay like we want to allocate pretty much every dollar of each paycheck to something. Doesn't mean it's all going to bills. Sometimes it's going to savings or extra debt payments or even like fun things that are coming up. But we need to allocate every dollar so you know where, you know, your entire paycheck's going. And we can just move expenses around, you know, like allocate it so your month is more even and less stressful. So you're not like, yeah, like, oh my gosh, can't go out to eat or do anything yeah. because my rent's due. But then the second half of the month, you don't have that huge payment in there anymore so you're like oh like I have money again something that is like at the top of my brain like probably like almost daily now and has been a huge topic of conversations with all my friends are in their 30s inflation Um, I have like personally felt the stress of it I'm sure all of your clients have and maybe you personally too everything is so expensive right now and I make the joke that like eggs are ten dollars I'm buying like the two dollar like egg carton but like six eggs now instead of a dozen like I've started doing that because I'm like well I really don't you know it's like you're doing like eating math in your head you're like well I really am like a single woman I don't I'm not eating a dozen eggs a week or even in two weeks so like let me cut back but everything is so expensive and it's so stressful and I that's a result of COVID and and everything that's happened in our world in the last like five to six years so specifically in relation to inflation how would you like calm someone's money anxiety with them just wanting to like live their life, but not be stressed walking into the grocery store or the clothing store or getting gas. Yeah, no, I mean, it's affected, like you said, I mean, everyone, I mean, my grocery bill too. I mean, obviously, if everyone affects everyone differently in different like areas, but I mean, for groceries, it's wild. Even like, like I've I've started even switching stores and like going to multiple stores because I'm like, I need to like figure out how to like, you know, fix this in some way. And I think the important thing with inflation to try to remember, I mean, it's not easy. And this is obviously easier said than done is like, we want to focus on the things we can control. So like kind of control the controllable we so it's like, what things can I control in my own life? And that isn't the answer most people want to hear, but it's the truth. So one getting really clear on the things that you do value and the things that you truly do not want to cut not not even just don't want to but like it would significantly kind of like reduce your quality of life so for example I mean this is a podcast but like I spend like zero dollars on anything like beauty related Um, but before I used to like get my nails done all the time and I mean obviously they can charge whatever they want like you do you but it's not cheap to get like gel you know manicures every whatever two three weeks or whatever it is like I mean it it was getting crazy so I was like hey like this season of life is just not for me. And like, I don't really care. My nails aren't done. It's not a big deal. I have like, I can paint my own nails at home if I really need. But that was something where I was like, this is an easy for me thing to just kind of like cut. Or if it is important to you, maybe you kind of do it like instead of every two weeks, you kind of do it every four weeks. Like it's not saying fully cut it or, you know, it's just kind of reducing it. Um, For groceries, they say the biggest thing 
is just going in with a plan and like maybe some weeks, you know, trying to reuse ingredients is something I've been really trying to do instead of like, because I have been wasteful in the past, um, like getting things and not finishing it or like yeah. I've been trying to freeze things a little more or just like use something for like three different recipes or something instead of like throwing it out or whatever. Um, so it's just kind of, I'm not like a meal prepping person. I, I love all those videos. They seem like really great in theory, but I'm not someone who's like going to sit there and meal prep for four hours on the weekend. Yeah. But for some people that works for them. For me, I'm just like going in with a list, really trying to stick to it or do like grocery pickup. So you can't pick up other things and you can see the total amount before you even like, you know, check out. It's just really getting clear on the things you value, the things you don't. And it might be a season of life where you have to cut or reduce things. Um, and that's fine. I, I always tell people just because you cut something for now doesn't mean you can't add it back later. Like you don't need to make this like a permanent thing. Like maybe right now you were going out to eat three, three or four days a week. Maybe you reduce that to two days a week. Like it's fine, you know, like, or mm-hmm. tell your friends, I think to your point earlier, like where you talk about this with friends, like for people listening, the more you are open with your friends, they probably have maybe not the exact same struggles, but some kind of money struggle everyone does. So the more you kind of say like, hey, maybe instead of like going out for dinner and drinks, why don't we get takeout and like eat at my place or something? Yeah, you're still eating, you know, you're not cooking or maybe you say I'll cook, you bring wine or something like that. You kind of get creative. You can still see your friends, but the more you're open about it, you know, the more that can help too. So with inflation, I mean, it's unfortunate. I, I wish there was like a permanent thing, but I think really focusing on what you can control, trying to save a little bit, and then just really focusing on the expenses that you truly value and then kind of reducing and cutting the ones that maybe the season of life just have to be cut or reduced. Yeah. And there can be things that you really value within each of those categories. I have friends that really value getting their nails done. I've never kind of like you, Ali, I've never really been that girl. There's ways that I can you know, feel that I'm doing that self care. Um, maybe not all the time, but like press on nails are great. I love them. They're like six dollars. And you just throw on some glue and let me tell you, I've gotten a lot of compliments and people don't even know. So there's ways around it. I loved your example of like the takeout, like you bring food, I'll get wine. My friends and I have been doing that a lot lately. We hosted actually a Galentine's um Friday night and it was like potluck. We just in the group chat, okay, like I'm gonna bring xyz app so and so is going to bring xyz um my roommate and i went in on a pie for everyone and so it's and we stayed in there's ways around it where you can just enjoy your life but also not like light your credit card on fire (laughs) sometimes it can really feel like that i've been guilty of it and it's stressful no i feel like i'm the same and like like i said i spend like nothing like i my all my clothes are from like I'm not like a brand person and for some people like that's totally fine if you are I'm it's just not me as a person like I get my hair cut like once a year I like I'm not a brand person but I spend if you look people will be like oh she's like I spent excessively on like college sports like we have season football tickets we have yeah. club seats like tailgate season like we will have all the food drinks I spend a lot on like travel and things like that but like that's where I mean, I spend very little like I have like no home decor like I don't care <laughs> <laughs> about anything like home related or clothes that's just not but for some people that's that's their thing and that's right. wonderful but it's like just finding kind of what you value and then cutting the things cutting the things that you just don't and, like- and a huge thing is like you don't have to spend your your money the same way as your friends and like being honest about those things um you can see a lot of people like thriving for the context of the podcast and you're like well I want to be like doing this that and the other thing but it's like do you really care about that like do you do you actually want to be doing that and something that just came to my head that I am curious to pick your brain about is with your clients how have you noticed the conversation or relationship with money with people in their childhood change how they are when they're adults, especially like 30 somethings when you're independent and maybe you have a mortgage or your rent living on your own. So uh, there's like studies that show that your money habits or what you think about money is like formed by the age of like seven or eight, just wild to like think about. Um, And it's not even just like what you're taught, right? It's just what you observe. So like even when you said earlier, like you observed that your parents like printed and highlighted things and you're like, oh, that's just what I think people do. Then, you know, it's just like what you pick up as a kid. Like, you know, I remember going into like all the department stores as a kid with my mom and they always tried to get her to open a store card and she would always be like, oh, sorry, I can't like 
she used to be like, my can't, my husband will kill me, which might, and then like, I started picking that up. And like, I remember like being older and like going to a store and I'd be like, oh, my dad said I can't, which like didn't really make sense. I just kind of like continued it from my mom, which I'm thankful for, like didn't open store cards, but it's just things you observe, right? Where you just kind of pick things up. Um, And I think a lot of people don't think about their money past. Like they don't really, you know, I've seen a lot where if say you didn't have a lot of money, right? You kind of go one of two ways. Either you spend a lot because you feel like you didn't have and now you do. So you want to like, you know, kind of make up for lost time and you feel like I deserve this. I'm going to buy everything. Or you like hoard money because you're so scared of not having because you didn't have or, um, you know, certain things like that. I've seen a lot. And like one of the first things we do is really diving into your money past, especially um if you haven't ever done that so like i said what have you what things do you remember you know your parent or guardian teaching you or not teaching you what things did you observe what is your biggest like fear around money um you know if you had a lot of money what would you do with it do you feel like you're wealthy like what does that look like to you and just kind of like diving into that because it really does affect like even a lot of i see it a lot with like spending habits like especially like impulse of spending um, if you feel a certain emotion, sometimes people will buy things and that's usually tied to something related, you know, in your money past where like, if you feel anxious, some people like online shop or whatever it is. Right. So it's very tied to kind of like spending and emotional triggers. Um, but I mean, I think a lot of people don't think about their money past cause they're like, Oh, I'm an, I'm my own person. Like, you know, which is great, but it really, a lot of your habits kind of are from not saying you can't change them. You can obviously break through that and kind of create healthy money habits, but it is very heavily tied to what you observed or didn't observe, um, like as a kid around money. Yeah. So what you're saying is you're a part-time therapist. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I definitely, like it. <laughs> there's been many times where I get the whole like, you know, pass rent. And I'm obviously not a therapist by any means, but I, I, yeah. um, I feel like I, you know, just helping, sometimes it's just helpful to get it out and it clicks for people like, oh, I didn't even think that this like was a problem for me, you know, because you're like, I just never kind of thought about it. And then once we kind of like can dive into that, you realize like, okay, this is, and then we can set like spending rules or boundaries and things so that you're aware. It's like first back to, you know, first awareness of what's going on. And then we can kind of work on like, okay, well, if you know that you you know, every time, every time you're, you're sad, you online shop or something, I don't know, right? Then we can work on like, recognizing that and putting kind of boundaries in place that we don't just like, you know, order $300 worth of things. And so we want to kind of get to this like baseline of like, you're buying things that you planned for, and you can feel good about it and not feel guilty. And it's not putting you in debt. You know, you're just like, okay, I bought it. That was part of the budget, you know, move on type of right. Exactly. You're like, I accounted for this. It's all good. I'm allowed to have this in regards to the work that I've done to a lot for it. Totally. And then just like in general, the whole topic of money, the B word that we talked about, why is talking about money so taboo? Why does it make people sweat? Why does it make people cry? There's so many reasons why I think it's still taboo, especially for women, right? Because like until somewhat recently, like as a woman, you really couldn't do anything financially based. Like so our current house, I technically bought like it's in my name uh, mortgages, which like you couldn't have done. And 19, I think it was 1976 was like where women could get a mortgage without a co-signer or they could be denied like a male co-signer. And it's just wild to think that that was not long ago. Right. Like, and it's just like all these things that are coming up, like women actually managing money and like women um, just like knowing what's going on. Like it is decently new. I mean, when you think about like history, right. Like you weren't supposed to share with your friends if you were struggling, like you weren't supposed to, you know, that was like a, you keep inside the home type of discussion. And I think that's how not saying like, Call, like parents, grandparents were raised, right? Like you don't tell anyone if you have financial struggles. So it's kind of this like wall that I feel like our, you know, is breaking down and just making it more conversational. So I think it will take time. I mean, it's getting, it's much better than it obviously was. I think it's just people feel guilt or embarrassed about decisions they've made, you know, in the past or kind of where they're at. But like we've talked about, I think the more you share with your friends, the more you realize like they have money insecurities as well. I mean, everyone has something they don't love about their finances, even if they put on a front on, you know, social media or whatever, everyone has seasons of life where it is kind of a struggle. I mean, no one is perfect. I always say if someone tells you their budget is perfect, they're lying. I've never seen a perfect budget where they stick to it exactly every month. I mean, someone saying they do that, I promise you they're lying or they're not really budgeting because I've never 
seen it like that. And um, I think the more we just openly share, you know, even if you don't want to share your exact numbers, like we said, like, hey, you know, I really have some big money goals. I'd love if we could get takeout instead. Like, yeah. if your friend cares about you, they're not gonna be like, oh, no, like, you can't get to, you know, they're gonna be like, sounds good. Like, I also have money goals. Or, hey, I really want to go to like Europe next summer. And I'm trying to say, you know, the more we talk about it, I think, um, the better. I mean, we talk about, you know, I say like with our friends and spout partners, or it's like you talk about like sex life, coworker drama, like anything. You'll talk about, I mean, childbirth. You know, people will like be yeah. open about everything, but then you like mention like you have debt or whatever, and it's like, oh, you yeah, know, it's like that's yeah. the thing that sets people off. A huge thing too that I've been working on and like has seen work and stuff is just like in life in general, and I think any listener can can take this advice, is just like setting boundaries. And you don't have to say yes to every invite. And that's something that I struggled with for a really long time. And I know that a lot of my friends have struggled with. It can be hard to really be like, well, they're thriving and going on every trip and saying yes to every bachelorette trip and doing this and like a new dress for every wedding and stuff. Yeah, totally. And I think if your friends like, you know, bachelorette parties now are at... It's... <laughs> Just a whole don't, other conversation. Don't open that but, can of worms with me. Yeah, say a whole other conversation. <laughs> but it's like if your friends really care, right? Like, or if they're your people that you are going to have in your life maybe forever, then they'll understand. And it's not saying, like, it's not saying don't do things. It's just planning for things. So, like, if you are going to the bachelorette party and you do have kind of a budget to spend, maybe when you go out, like, you're just aware of things, you know? Like, it just maybe instead of having you know, 10 mixed drinks, you have like five, right? Or whatever it is, right? Like you're just strategically thinking things through, or maybe you go to the store before you go out, like go to the liquor store, buy a bottle pregame really hard. And then you, you know, you save <laughs> someone, whatever it is, right? Like you kind of yeah. just figure it out. Um, and just being open with people like to your, like you said, you don't have to say your exact numbers if you don't want to, but just being like, Hey, so happy to be here and celebrate with you. But like, you know, I do have like other things, you know, I'm trying to, I don't know, like save or buy a house or whatever yeah. it is. And yeah. like, I have, I'm just being mindful of that as well. Like I'm doing both. I'm here, I'm trying to celebrate, but I also have to be like mindful of, you know, my own financial future. Cause at the end of the day, no one will care about your money as much as you do. And I always tell yeah. people that like anyone who says they can fix your finances for you or, you know, do all this like magical, like magic wand things, like one, they can't. And two, they don't really, like at the end of the day, it's you, it's your finances. And I, money is the one, not the one thing, but I'd say health, your health is probably the other thing, but you will manage money for the rest of your life. You, the rest of your life, you might, you hopefully are not going to pay off debt forever. You will manage money for the rest of your life. You will be spending money for the rest of your life. So it is something you have to care about, you know, like you have to care about it and get these habits and strategies in place because you will do it forever. Unless you like I guess win the lottery or have some kind of crazy inheritance where you make you have millions and maybe you never have to worry. And if that's you, go wonderful. Unfortunately, that's not me. So yeah, <laughs> just, can I have yeah. some? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I really like that you touched on like, hey, I'm here to celebrate, but I can't, you know, do X, Y, Z. That's a huge theme and phase of life that I'm literally in right now is a lot of friends are planning weddings and that industry is its own beast in itself but then you know some friends are getting married in two years some are friends are getting more married in 14 months and so the timeline of like when celebrations are happening um is very scattered and it can be like stressful because I'm not personally planning a wedding but I have a couple friends that are who are also like trying to be like a bride but a good friend and celebrate but then like wait I have to pick a florist and and so it's just really navigating what's important to you and saying no or saying yes to certain things um and knowing that like that's okay and my sister always tells me that personal finance is personal it's just that it's personal and it doesn't have to be personal to anyone else if it's important to you if you really want that like car or the gel manicure that we keep saying um that's fine in relation to, you know, you work with a lot of people and probably see and hear a lot of different emotions and things come up. What would you say are some like personal characteristics that someone should just adopt or be aware of in order to like financially succeed? I think the first is just honesty, not even just with other people, but with yourself. I think a lot of people live in, you know, if you feel like you're going to hold it too deep or you're just like, hey, like everyone else can do it and not me. 
Um, I think just being truly honest with yourself on where you're at, because unless we know, like I said, I've said before, unless we know kind of where you're at today, I think you really need to start being honest with yourself and your numbers. I mean, I always say we want, we want to separate kind of facts versus feelings. I'm not saying feelings aren't involved in money because they obviously are, but we also need to look at the numbers. So if you're feeling one way, but the numbers are telling us something different that, you know, the numbers aren't going to lie to you. Like your spending's yeah. not lying. Your debt's not lying. You might be lying to yourself, but the numbers aren't going to lie. So we want to be really, I think, just really open and honest with ourselves. And I think someone who's really successful is um, just someone who like, this is not really a one word thing, but someone who just like doesn't give a crap about what other people think or doesn't, not saying doesn't give it, I care about what other people think, but I guess kind of breaking through of that, like people pleaser mode, which took me a lot of time. I'm feeling like I have to do things for other people. I'm very much a people pleaser, like super type A, oldest child, like very like I have to do yeah. everything to make other people happy. And I think realizing that I don't. Um, and to our point, like we said, kind of doing personal finance is personal and realizing like people aren't going to like disown you if you make a different decision than they are. And if they do, then they're not your people. But I think really realizing um you know, kind of removing the people pleaser and just being confident and confidence takes time. Like people always say, I want to be confident with my money. And that takes time. It's not going to ho- happen overnight. Like just like yeah. the financial situation you're in right now did not occur overnight. Like if you're in $30,000 of credit card debt, I doubt that happened in one day. So you can't expect it to get paid in a day or, you know, student loans. If you have $100,000 student loans, like that's four years in the making plus your whole yeah. other issue with being 18 and not knowing what's going on. But, you know, yeah. like you can't expect everything to change in a day. And it's just um, taking those baby steps. And I think the final thing I'd say is just, really understanding your why and just being fully, you know, just really determined because there's going to be days and months there. You just have really crappy seasons of life. I mean, everyone does and you want to give up and motivation will only take you so far. I mean, obviously you want to be motivated, but it will die off at some point. So you really need like processes and things in place to keep you going on the days where you're like, this is a crappy day, you know, or season, not even just days, weeks, months, whatever it is. So I think um, those are the things I'd say, and they all take time. So if you're like, that's not me right now, like doesn't mean you, it can't be you. These are all things that yeah. you know take a lot of, um, planning and time and strategy and self-reflection to get there. But those are the things I'd see the people who don't give up and like message me two years after we work together and like, I'm still doing it. Like, those are the things, you know, you have to keep going. Um, even when you feel like you don't want to, and you're why, why you, why do you want to budget or why do you want to pay off debt? It's not just, I want to pay off debt. Like those aren't your big goals in life, right? Like I always tell people, like, they, I want to yeah. pay off debt. And I know you do, but like, why do you want to pay off debt? Is it because you want a different job, you know, a job you love that's maybe like less, you don't make as much? Or is it because you want to travel the world? Or is it because you want to build your dream home? Is it because you want to retire early? Is it because you just want to, whatever it is, like those are, that's your why, but you have to pay off debt, save and budget to get there. Those are kind of the stepping stones. So really just remembering kind of like, why you want to do all Allie thank you so much for being on the so thriving podcast I love this conversation it was so helpful for me personally so thank you yeah <laughs> I, feel so like I, had like a, I feel like I had like a private session any last words of insight or advice for our listeners I think the the biggest thing is just to start and I know that sounds super cliche but if you're like super stressed out right now just start by opening your bank account like log into your checking account and just look at the number and then close it and do something else tomorrow. It doesn't have to be this thing where you sit down for five hours and like analyze all your numbers if that's like going to cause you anxiety. But, you know, you just have to start somewhere and take those baby steps because it, it does add up. Even an extra $20 to debt, you're like, Allie, I have $10,000 of credit card debt. $20 doesn't matter, but it does because you're building yeah. the habit. And one day, maybe that 20 becomes 50 and then it becomes 100. And then, you know, you build the confidence of actually doing it. So, just start and um, just kind of remember that it, it does. It can be conversational and easy. It doesn't have to be this like super strict, like formal thing where you like only come with like, you know, but you know, binders and papers and like sit down and do it. If you take something away, pick one thing you can do from this episode and just do that one thing and just kind of just start. Awesome. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on again. Um, I really hope listeners feel empowered by this, that they can thrive with their money and not always feel like in this survival mode, especially navigating your 30s. Everyone is in such different phases. Um, and where can people find you? Um, Instagram is probably the best that's financially focused 
focused. I I'm on Instagram too much. That's what you know, when you get like your phone alerts every day where it's like you spend yeah. like 15 hours on your phone. You're like, oh, geez, that's not good. Um, so Instagram is the best place. And then I have like I said, I started as a blog. So my website has like a ton of blog posts. I have like a free financial course. I mean, my website has all the free things for you to just like get started on um, and start taking action. So but yeah, message me on Instagram. Tell me something you took away from the episode. I love I love chatting with people. If you couldn't tell, I could talk about money forever. So. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much again. Um, and yeah, listeners, reach out if you need any um, help or advice. Allie is here to help everyone thrive. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Sir Thriving. I hope you took some helpful information away from it and are feeling inspired. If you know someone who is surviving or thriving and would benefit from hearing this episode, feel free to send it over to them. Remember, sharing is caring. To leave a review or rating of the show, head to Spotify to follow, rate, and let me know what you think. All information about today's episode, guest, and podcast social handles will be in the description, so don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date.